All right. All right. Welcome. Thank you for uh, giving us your lunch hour today. Uh, thank you, Stacy and Stromquist, for uh, this great new training room. Uh, this is really a great, fantastic building that they've had. I don't know who's, is this the first time you guys have been here since they opened the new room? Yeah, really nice. Uh, makes these type of situations really easy. Uh, I'm Kevin Leathers. I'm the district sales manager for Belimo for what we call the Deep South. So it's Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. And uh, we work with Strongquist. Strongquist is our platinum distributor in the South. So uh, we partner with training classes like this to try to get new information out into the market. And when we can get so many customers in one room, it really makes that um, a really easy and productive day. Uh, also joining me is Phil Wynn in the back in the white shirt. Uh, he's our regional manager for the entire south eastern quadrant of the country. So and we've got Phil here too. If there are some questions that come up, uh, Phil might be able to help us with that. Uh, we want to talk about the Belimo energy valve today. Who has heard about the energy valve yet? Heard anything about it? Seen it online? Uh, at a show? At a, at a conference? Energy valve has been out for about a year now. Uh, it's really starting to pick up steam. No pun intended. Uh, it won the it, one of the innovation awards at ASHRAE this year. So it's getting a lot of, uh, starting to gain a lot of traction. And it's, it's a really unique product. And hopefully in 45 minutes you have a better understanding. You won't know everything about it, and that's fine. We want you to understand what it is, how it works, and how it can benefit your facility or your uh, building owner. Pressure independent valves came out 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. And in the beginning, it was an odd, crazy idea. You know, we liked pneumatics and we liked globe valves and that's what all the engineers were raised on we're fine with that we don't want to hear about the pressure independent valve and we we Belimo came out with it and nobody wanted to hear about it well it started to gain traction and now 10 years later everybody makes a pressure independent valve right back then it was too expensive why would you need that we can control things fine with these globe valves and these pneumatics and all of these things well now everybody has it and now it's time to raise the bar and take all the new technology that's come out in the last 10 years and apply it to that pressure independent product. And that's what we have with the energy valve. We're going to tell you that story. And here's what makes it the next generation of pressure independent valves. With the pressure independent, original pressure independent valves, we'd say, oh, this is going to save you energy. It's going to save you pumping power. It's going to save you water. Well, how? How much? Uh, mm, a fair amount. Well, that doesn't really fly, right? With your building owners, they, right? We're gonna, this is going to be really good. What's my return on investment? Um, uh, it's short. That doesn't work. Well, now we can measure energy usage. We can measure the savings. We can measure the return on investment with this product. And that's, that's the real plus here. Controls power. And we do all this by managing delta T of your coils. Okay, That's where this all takes place. So the Belimo energy valve it's, it's a, a combination of parts that we've all put together. They're all out here on the shelf in various stages. We've just taken it, put it all together, put the brains to tie it all in, and made it a Belimo product with a five-year warranty that stands on its own. It's a pressure-independent control valve with an integrated BTU meter. So we can, measure, we can measure the flow, we can measure the energy usage, all of that at the valve. We're going to measure energy usage at the coil, at the air handler. We're going to control power, and we're going to manage your delta T. And all that's going to work together to improve the efficiency of your central plant and your chiller and your coil performance. Again, it's basic parts. What we have here, just look at this. It's just, this is just a standard CCV control valve. We don't, it's not, nothing exotic. We're taking this off of our shelf in Danbury. It's just a, con, a CCV valve, okay? Everybody knows what a characterized control valve is. The ball valve that has the disc cut into it to give you that control, okay? And then we take our uh, actuator, and some of you may use, anybody have our MFT actuators? They're programmable, have the brain, have the chip in there. You may have it, you still don't even know you have it. Well, it's a super smart actuator, and we've made it even smarter. 
um, uh, with the MFT technology. It's got a, um, um, a uh, web, uh, what's the word? Web server built in, uh, lots of brains and built in smarts. Then we have a flow sensor on the back. This whole back section, that's the header, a magnetic or an ultrasonic flow meter, depending upon the size of the valve. And then we tie it all together with the temperature sensors before and after the coil. Okay? And that's where our BTU meter comes in. We're measuring uh, energy usage at the coil. <coughs> Any questions about that? The structure of the energy valve? Making sense so far? You see where we're going with this a little bit? Ties all together. And then it's now BACnet compatible. So it can talk on your system remotely and access it. Okay? <coughs> so Belimo energy valve. Measuring flow in delta T allows us to do a couple of things. We can measure our data. We can observe the data live. Uh, we can record and we can trend performance data. And it's BACnet compatible. Uh, a couple of things here on the screen. Um, uh, we'll have a better picture of it, but um, this is what sets it apart. You can measure the energy usage and the flow and the water usage. You can observe it live, you can record it, and you can trend performance data. And we'll get into a little more about where that data lives. So we're directly controlling flow or energy. Oh, let me go back. Okay. Um, let's see. So flow meter talks to the actuator. Okay? Well, the brains live here. That's all this is doing. No moving parts. It's magnetic or it's ultrasonic flow meter. All it's doing is talking to the actuator. The actuator has the built-in algorithms that adjust based on signal, delta, set, the things. And we directly control the flow or the energy. We measure it and then that allows us to limit the waste with delta T manager. Delta T Manager is the uh, software and the brains built into this actuator. Okay? What we've done, uh, this is a simple power curve. Okay? You, may, if you, you may have seen this, may have not. Uh, we're measuring power output. We're measuring GPM through that valve, through that coil, through the air handler. And this blue line is our Delta T. Delta T is that the temperature, water temperature return. Um, and where's my graph here? So what we're trying to do is limit the waste with the Delta T manager. Because what happens is uh, power output, uh, flow increases. So on this one, let's say we are at uh, 55 GPM flow through the coil. We continue to over pump and send water to that coil, right? That's how the systems are set up. We turn on that extra chiller, send more water out there. We can't get any more energy out of that water, right? We're just pumping water through the system. And that's where we reach what we call the power saturation point. It's a term we've come up with where that is the maximum energy you're going to get out of that water. No matter how much more water you send to that coil, all you're going to get is that delta T of 12. Okay? You start pumping more water and what happens to the delta T? goes down, right? You all live in that world every day, right? More water, delta T drops. So once we reach that power saturation point, well, I thought the head, we go into what we call the waste zone out here, okay? That's where you're turning on more chillers, ramping up the pump, you're pumping more water, and how much more energy are you getting out of that water? None. All you're doing is spending electricity, spending water, running pumps, staging on chillers, and you're getting zero return on that investment. Okay? It's just you, you're paying more money to the utilities. That's all you're doing about pumping more water. What the Delta T manager is going to do is limit you to the saturation point. And it's going to basically step in just like that. That's the alarm. The power, you'll hear that alarm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's not a control system. You've got your control system. You've got your set points and you've got your signal that you're sending out to that valve. Okay. This, there's an hour long presentation on just this part. But I'm just going to give you the quick easy version of that. You're set to flow at 55 GPM. 
it starts flowing at 60, at 65, your delta T drops below your 12 degree set point that the delta T manager is set for. We set that at the factory. You can also program that on site and reprogram it on site and remotely if it's on BACnet. The delta T manager steps in and says, hang on, control signal. Our delta T has dropped. We're going to slow, we're going to, basically it's going to close the valve a little bit. Stop over pumping, stop overflowing. Let's let delta T recover. <coughs> delta T gets back up above set point. Delta T manager says, okay, go on back, turns it back over, turns control of that valve back over to the DDC system. Makes sense? Very basic. That's all it's doing. Okay? And all of that can be, there are override programs, you can turn it off, you can turn it's all, there's lots of different components to this. But that's what the... What's set for, say, 55, whatever you set it for. Mm -hmm. Once you start to go past that, it's going to close that valve? Automatically? Yes. The question was, once, if it starts to over pump, or we re actually it's when the delta T starts to drop below set point. That's because you are over pumping at that point and you've gone above because we're, we're controlling to delta T set point at that point. Yes, it will basically start to close that valve off a little bit to slow the flow and limit the flow. Because yeah, you, yeah. Is it on each air handler? Pardon? Is it on each air handler? Is it on each air handler? Um, we have used these on yeah on the terminal unit on every coil. We do have some where it's used. Um, um, I can't remember the application, but uh, going into a building, there was a large energy valve that controlled the whole building uh, because of the way the the units were stacked up. It just was better to put it on the whole building. Um, so, so Kevin, I, let me take a shot at this. I want to make sure I got it right. It seems yes. like what we're doing here, and you tell me if I'm right or not is you know, normally you size a valve for a certain amount of pressure drop to give you a certain amount of flow. And I think what inherently happens is the pressures get off so you overflow the coil. And I think what this is doing, the way I think about this, is that you've got the BTU system. If the coil's rate for X percentage of BTU, if it's like from zero to X or GPM, you're gonna be dialed in, it's constantly controlled with that GPM so you're getting the maximum efficiency out of your coil. So instead of trying to control for pressure drop and guess where those curves intersect, you're dead nuts on the GPM or the BTUs that you're looking for. So you're, you're centering your space, sends a signal, says we're too hot, we're too cold, but this controls and manages the coil performance automatically. So it's like, you know, in the past you had to use a balancing valve or something like that, right. you don't have to do that anymore. But would you need, for this to really work properly, would you need variable speed pump? Yes, you need variable But you've got kind of speed pump. Yeah. yeah, at some point something's got to give. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something's got to happen. Yeah. Yep. And if you need a variable frequency drive to go in your pump, just saying. <laughs> do you know where they? Do you know where we can get one? Just saying, right. we can help you out with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically traction control for your pumping system. It steps in and makes makes a decision yep. when the car is out of control. Yeah. 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 And let, let me let me uh, Eric made a good point. Let me back up just very quickly, just for 30 seconds, on pressure independent valves in general. The whole th idea was we don't care what all the pressure variations are on the system. The in the beginning it was a manual uh, mechanical pressure regulator built into the valve, a little plunger basically that controlled that absorbed all the pressure variations in the system. So we didn't really care what. Um, CV rating was. We didn't care what pressure drop was, right? We would, all we want to know is the GPM to that coil. That's really all we need to size the valve. Now we've gone and we're using the electronic mm -hmm. pressure independent valve. It's not a mechanical regulator. It's built into the, the brains of the actuator and it opens and closes that valve. That's where the mechanical adjustment comes in. And we don't care what all the pressure variations are on the system. It's all absorbed right there by the smarts in the actuator and the opening and the closing of the valve. And this is where we get the question, well, what about my, uh, what I'm really worried about is the CEO and at the set point in his office. And but that's what we're trying to control. Well, it, you're not affecting the set point and the discharge temperature. All we're, because you start, you send more water to pump, well, it's, the delta T is actually direct. You're not sending any more energy, any more cooling, any more heat into that office. So we're not really messing with the set point. Okay? It's not effective. We're saving you energy back at the central plant. I tell you what, I'm not so blown away by this product. So think of it another way. Um, you got a car, right? 
So the energy valve is kind of like the, the energy. It's controlling the energy, but you know, you're, you're, you're still driving it. I mean, you're set point. So as a matter of fact, how many people get calls and too hot or too cold? You go in and, and you just can't get the system to just that way. Does that happen much? So I mean, there's one or two things. It's either your temperature control system is off, your pneumatics are calibrated, your set point's off. I mean, that's a pretty easy fix, right? You guys get that set. But what if that's dead nuts on? You calibrate that, the sensor's working, it's sending the right signal out. But they're still too hot or too cold. Not only that, the person on this floor is too cold, the person on this floor is too hot, and the person on the top floor is not getting any flow at all. So you probably call the test and balance guy or whatever, you're playing with the balance valves trying to get all the work out, so he's up a lot of your time. So I can tell you, this product saves a ton of energy, but the big thing it does for you guys, it's gonna make you guys look like rocket scientists, it's gonna make your job easier because it's automatically gonna do all that stuff. So all the stuff you're doing, you're looking at a coil, trying to get the GPMs and adjusting the balance of the valve, trying to get it to work. This does all that. So we just got to convince the people that have the money that they need this, so that your tenants can be more comfortable, and it gives you guys time to sit around and watch control trends and order BFPs from us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. I'm reminded of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. <laughs> Always be closing, ABC, right? Awesome. Okay, benefits of using the energy valve. It's just, Eric was just saying, simplified control. We're, we're, but we're boiling this down or we're taking all the, the reason pressure independent valves were initially create, created is because everything historically has been oversized, right? Yep. Everything's oversized for the fudge factor because we all want to cover our tails and get off of that job in one way or the other. We want it just to go away. So if it's oversized by 10 or 60 percent, fine. It's good and it's going. We don't want to undersize it because that's where we get lawsuits and everybody gets called back in and it's ugly. Oversize everything because we couldn't really dial it in. Now we can dial it in pretty darn close. And if we can take care of this, all those super high efficiency chillers work the way they're supposed to work and you get your money's worth out of that super. I mean chillers are super efficient now, right? And they're, they, if you get those dialed in, they will hum right along the way they're designed to run. And that's what we're trying to do. Simplified control. Take all the fudge factors out. Take all the slop out of the system so everything runs more efficiently. So we can deliver the exact flow to the coil or we can deliver, deliver the exact load to the space, the energy. Uh, control signal directly controls flow or energy. There's a lot of variables with this system, with this product. Uh, with simplified control, deliver the exact energy to the space regardless of system fluctuations. Okay? Uh, you can set there again, I'm not we're not going deep into the the programming of the of the valve, but the power control mode can overcome disruptions in the supply water temperature. Uh, saving energy. Uh, the higher your delta T is a more efficient heat transfer, that's what it all boils down to, that's what every slide in this presentation is about, less water to create the same load, right? It's, uh, when we get to some of the examples here, the, the test cases that we're going to talk about, you're going to see, but uh, it's just inversely proportionate. It's, it's a huge, huge savings. Um, if we can manage this blue curve and keep it stable and from dropping below your set point, your power usage and your water usage are manageable and there are true settings you can show. Phil, anything else on this slide that you... I know this slide can get super involved, but anything else you want to add to that? Yeah. Okay. No, basically all this graph is showing that um, the energy valve is going to keep you from going into this saturation point is the, the zone where more water does it create more heat transfer. So basically his set point is 14 I believe delta T. So if it drops two degrees for five minutes, the delta T manager rides along with your DDC flow set point. So once it goes two degrees below the uh, set point for two, uh, two degrees for five minutes, it will pull away and limit the flow get the, that delta T back to set point or above and then it'll jump back with your DDC flow set point. So that's, that's basically it. So here you're pumping 55 degree, uh, 55 GPMs at approximately uh, 13 degree delta T. 
when you're over pumping now you're pumping 65 GPM your delta T is about 10 so. yep <coughs> when you put it on paper it's some you know it really makes sense another benefit are the the interfaces and the the data we're storing all this data and it's stored in the actuator that's the cool thing. all this data is stored in the actuator sitting on top of the valve you can track equipment performance your system degrades over time you can know about it before there's a comfort issue okay part of this battle is the new chillers are super efficient we're not we can't we're just going to allow you to get the efficiency you've paid for out of that chiller your coils Boy, they degrade, you know, they're perfect the first time you turn them on, and from there it's a downhill slide, right? They get beat up, they get bent, they get foul, they get dirty, they get clogged, they get all those things. We can't improve that, but we're going to maximize the efficiency of the existing state of the coils you have. And we'll show you a little uh, uh, test case that we did at MIT. Uh, I like this, like as it shows, this is the actual live interface. If you're back net, you can pull this up and you'll see the valve. And it'll show you your supply and return temp. It'll show what your Delta T manager is doing. It's been active for X number of out minutes or hours that day. Uh, it'll show you what you're flowing and it'll show your power output, live data on each valve. Is this wireless? No. You got to wire it to your, your energy management? Yes. Yep. And the it's... IP. Pardon? The web server is back net IP. Yes. Um, just was at one last week in Nashville. They didn't have it on their back net, but you can go up and you actually plug, you take your laptop and plug into that valve, and this comes up, and you're you're standing there looking at live data on the on the uh, actuator, and then you can download this data, 13 months of rolling data, okay, stored in the actuator, and plug. This is a free energy tool we give you with the energy valve. And it'll plug in, and it'll plot out, and it'll show you what your any curve is, it'll show you what your power saturation point is, and it'll help you. You're going to order it with a delta T set point, but we're going to come turn that on for you and help you manage that. And you go back and trend this. Some people are going to do it quarterly, some are going to look at it every six months. And you can tweak these numbers and your settings to really dial in what's going to be your best delta T set point for the energy savings you're going to get. Um, you need to be able to see exactly what it's doing before you, in other words, you put the valve in, you let it flow like it's been flowing. Can you, will you be able to see that before you start controlling? Absolutely, that's a great question. Can you see, can you, should you trend before you turn on all the brains? Yes. Uh, just did an installation and what we want to do is, if you're, let's say you, you pick an air handler and you're going you're gonna to retrofit it with an energy valve, you may or may not have any information on it now. If you don't, go ahead and take the new energy valve put it in and we'll ship it from the factory with the Delta T manager and the brains turned off. Just, that's the way we want to do it. You install it, and it's just a standard CCV control valve. Works, plug it in, plug and play, it's really easy installation and it's ready to go. And I'd say we want to run it for 30 days, trend it, then we come in after 30 days and we run, plug it in, we run this. And we want to see what it's been doing and what, and there's going to be some benefit just putting new valve, that new control valve. Mm -hmm. And we can set our benchmark. And then you come back in 30 more days. Well, actually, we, we do the trend 30 days. And before we leave, we turn on Delta T Manager and we have a set point. And we know, basically, based on that first 30 days, where we want to start that trending, that, that set point. Turn on all the brains. We go away. We come back in 30 more days or 60 days. And then you can start trending it. You could go look at it daily if you wanted to, if it's easy access. Uh, but yes, we do recommend at least a 30-day, the first time, just turn it on and set our benchmark. Hey Kevin, we got a uh, question from the internet. Uh, what sizes does it come in? It goes from, if you look on your, yep, what sizes, is it? the energy valve is in the catalog, it's online, it's at um, um, energyvalve.com, and I'm going to put on my readers. If you look in the front, it goes from half inch to six, okay? Uh, and that will go from, if you turn to, to the next page on the, so 
So uh, half inch to six and GPM range goes from uh, next to nothing up to 713 GPM. So that gives you a size range there. Um, the big flanged valve is or the largest. You get up to two and a half and bigger is the flange. Below that it's the, the small with the couplers. Yes? What's the recommended distance from for the coil and sensors? We need uh, five pipe diameters on the inlet. That's it. That's the only requirement. And that's really just to give that flow meter a good straight run to really measure the flow properly. After that you can go right, whatever you need to do. And the sensor could be right after the coil uh, for the return? Yes. Yep. We, we prefer the valve on the return side, right? And the, uh, the coil. pardon? I'd rather not store the coil. Yep, yep. So valves on the return side, and then that remote sensor will go on the supply side. Yep. Any other installation issues you can think of, Phil? You can install it on either or, the energy valve. Right. But there's a box that you select stating where you install it, supply or return. <laughs> yeah. So this is not meant to retrofit existing valves. You got to change the whole valve. Yes. You're going to take out the old globe valve you have. It's going to be this boat anchor size, and you can take this little energy valve and you're going to put it in there and install it. Yeah. Take out the valve too, right? Yep. It'll be on the same space. You might have to have an adapter. You may have to. It'll take maybe a little bit of. A little bit of pipe work, but not. I haven't seen anything that's been a total. It's usually a little smaller footprint, so you might need a spacer. You had to fill it in, but yeah. Okay. So access live or long-term data, uh, which will help you in many phases. But uh, so simplified control, you can deliver the exact GPM or the BTU. So here's a here's a better picture of the valve. Here's the two and a half and larger, the flanged. CCV, mag flow meter. Here's the small version. Nice, easy. We're talking just a little bitty footprint. Nice, slick installation. Um, uh, again, that's the flow meter on this one. Again, just a standard CCV ball valve. That's all that is. Same actuator, a little bit different flow meter, and your temperature sensors on the wells there. Save energy, delta, define your delta T low limits with the delta T manager. Uh, track equipment performance with live and long-term data. Does it really work? Here's what we want to know. This is where the energy valve was born, really. We went in there, um, MIT in Boston, huge sprawling campus with lots of old buildings, right? Anybody have lots of old buildings in Atlanta? Yeah, there's lots of old buildings on campuses and, and places. They were having a problem with this Hayden Library and they hired a big engineering firm in Boston to come in and do a study on their campus. And they decided that this low delta T problem could save them X number of dollars per year. They weren't exactly sure how to do it. So they brought Belimo, who we do business there, we're on campus, we know them very well, to help them with that project. So we went in with, I guess we started with our EPIV, some of the pressure independent valves, and built the brains into it as we went along, right, Phil? And that was kind of the, the way that developed. And out of it became the energy valve in conjunction with uh, this project. So we started with this Hayden Library on campus. It's a 150,000 square foot library on three floors. It was built in 1947, had its own chiller, but was later converted to the campus district cooling, this large sprawling campus. Six air handlers that gave majority of the cooling, and at the time, we started with an average delta T of 6.15, okay? Anybody have any buildings with single digit delta T? Yeah, of course, everybody, just about everybody does. So uh, the results, they trended August to October to 6.15 with the implementation of the Bolimo energy valve, almost double their delta T back to 12. Okay. And there's a white paper on energyvalve.com. You can download this in PDF or we can get you a hard copy. That, and this white paper was written by uh, Director of Enge Department of Engineering at UC Boulder, 
uh, Walter Henry from MIT, and one of our engineers uh, with Blimo in Switzerland. And that goes into the nuts and bolts and the deep, it's really in-depth in white paper reading on the MIT library project. University of Miami Hospital, another project, um, 11 air handlers, and I want to go back to MIT for a second and talk about that. Um, six air handlers, one of those was, uh, it was a bad coil or it wasn't salvageable, right? And they put a brand, there was, so of the six, one of them had a brand new coil, the rest were old but improved, almost doubled the Delta T. Even that new, brand new coil, Delta T manager was used a certain percentage of the time. You, would, you wouldn't think that that air handler would need the Delta T manager, Delta T manager but they did. <coughs> 11 air handlers, 2,600 tons of cooling, all the usual uh, issues with a medical school building at a hospital. 10,000 GPM with a Delta T of five and a half. Okay. Again, raised their Delta T from five and a half to 10.5 flow went down to 5,600 GPM from 10, over 10,000 GPM to 5,600 GPM. Drastic savings in a live building at the University of Miami. Again, we have a case study online um, about how we solved that. $66,000 a year in utility savings for that one building on that campus. And as you can imagine, we're going back in and doing other buildings on that campus, right? Uh, estimated payback was less than three years on the utility savings alone. This other case study, large tech company in North Carolina, which we, sh we sh can't name, but... You know, where's that from online? Rhymes with... <laughs> rhymes with large tech company in North Carolina. <laughs> So I love this slide. What this shows us, the gray box, this you know, this scatter graph here. That then we can find the trend. That's with just valve and actuator. We didn't have, we didn't turn on any of the brains yet. Just like we were talking about, the first month we turned it we we turned it on and it's just a DDC controlled actuator and valve. Okay. Position control, which is what you're doing right now in your buildings. Then we go back in 30 days later and we turn on flow control. Okay, We give it some brains, start to manage some things. And then we go in the last time and now you see the orange, we're starting to turn the brains on. We're turning on, finally we turn on Delta T manager. Okay, Same air handler, same coil, same valve, same actuator, same building. Nothing changes except we're going back in each month and we're turning on another little feature and then finally we turn on all the brains and we let this thing run. So here's where we start. Delta T of 6 degrees pumping 240 GPM. The next month we turn on flow control and we cut it by 100 GPM and we raise our Delta T to 10 and then we finally go in and we turn on all the brains and we cut their GPM to 96 GPM, under 100, and we raise their delta T up above the set point, up above 14, okay? That one building in North Carolina. I think we had significant water and utility savings there. Pumps, drives, chillers, pumping power, and water, and huge savings. I've got one more to tell you about because I see a lot of uh, property manager shirts in here and that's good. We like those. Um, working on a project right now with JLL in Nashville. at and No. no. Um, it's state of Tennessee. Oh. Right? Um, we went in and looked at their building and they're on uh, district water supply from the city and they've got a meter in their basement. You can go in and watch that meter just running. And they get a fine every month, right, for low delta T. They're paying this fine every month. 
So we're right now, we've just retrofitted one of the first office buildings and don't have the results yet, but the way it worked, we went in, we, it was a class just like this. And the guy came up afterwards and said, hey, well come, come talk to our building owner, which was the state of Tennessee. And we sat in a room with our JAL guys, building engineer and the Chuck state of Tennessee, Patrick. pardon? Chuck Patrick, probably. Chad Lovell, those guys? That yeah. Um, state of Tennessee engineers, and we showed them the product, and they're like, yes, go see the building. So we went to look at this office building, and Delta T was anywhere from four to nine on the 14 floors of this building. What we did, we, we've gone in on one, six, and 14, just to get a range, and, and tested those, and went back in last month and turned everything on, and their Delta T is now up. It's trending 12 to 16. Don't have the proof yet. We'll have the, the paper out soon. But that's a case where we put it in for 30 days, we ran it, now we've turned on the brains, now we're going to look at two or three other office buildings because the state of Tennessee has saw the immediate first month savings in that meter in the basement and then the utility bill that's coming back from uh, the city of Nashville and the savings on that fine. And it's not a, we're not talking a $10,000 fine a month, but enough that the property managers could go to the building owner and say, well, this is just in the first 30 days. We're turning this thing on. We have a uh, energy valve savings tool that I can use for you. I can show you how to use it. You plug in all your energy savings and things, and you can take that to your building owner and say, here's the estimated ROI, here's the estimated energy savings. Um, that's the story. I will stay. We'll stay and answer any questions you have. If this is something, a story that we want to take to your uh, facility, campus, building, or whatever you want to do. We'll take this and tell the story to anybody you want. This is the overview. We've got a, we can go deep, one hour technical. We'll bring in one of our engineers and they can go into the deep technical aspects if that's what is needed uh, at a facility. But that's the energy valve. Uh, it is a, it's a whole piece. You can't buy it in pieces and parts. It is, does have a five year warranty like all of our other products five-year warranty. Um, I, here's the, I usually get this question, well, we can do this ourselves. I get this from a really savvy controls contractor. We can do this ourselves. Yes, we could go out in the warehouse and pick out the parts and the pieces and the flow meters and we could put all this together. I'm not sure what that would cost. But then we'd have to get a programmer and we'd have to program the actuator and all the algorithms and all of that. And then you've got this monstrosity of price and equipment and programming. We've done it all with Belimo. This is all we do. You can look at the, our, our, the world we live in, which is you can go out here in the warehouse and see all the things that are in our business. This is all we do and this is why we think we're the best at it. And that's why we think the energy valve uh, is going to uh, uh, really change the way energy is managed, flow is managed on air handlers, and we're really, we're really happy with it. Any questions you have, we'll stay. Thank you for your time. Hey, hang on. Yeah, yeah, oh. I, I got to talk to you guys real quick, okay? So I have a question for you guys. First of all, does anybody use an energy valve already? Not yet, okay. Does anybody have some temperature control problems with either a chill water or hot water system? You do, and is it upper floors or whatever? So here's my proposal for you guys, okay? We will, if you guys can look at an energy valve and do an energy valve in the next 60 days, okay? We'll give you a 10% discount off of it, and that 10% discount can go to tools for you guys if you want it, or it can just go straight off the purchase of the energy valve. Okay, totally believe in this. So I, I think more, would you, be, would you be willing to let us take a look at your application and see if we can do something to fix it? Put you in touch with Ralph first. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And you, you as well, you mentioned you have some temperature control problems as well? Yeah, we're in the fight and told us. Oh, are you? <laughs> All right. Guys, I think this is going to change change everything. I think, you know, if we can get to the consulting engineering community and get them to start studying, you're going to see these things coming in on your systems. And it's going to make your life a lot easier. And the savings, I mean, this is, I mean, how many of you guys are being pushed to find ways to save energy? Yeah, absolutely. So, and hey, when, when the energy bills gets too high, who are they blaming? You guys, right? If, if, if you know, if our engineering staff could just do this, is kind of a no-brainer. You get this in the right application. It's not like you have to go back and tweak it. It's not like you have to do 
uh, anything other than just get it in. And that's what Kevin's saying. We're committed to helping you guys mm -hmm. get it in on your new construction. Does anybody have any new construction coming up that you guys are aware of? You as well. <laughs> so what we want to definitely do with you is we want to get with your consulting engineer over doing the engineering. We want to make sure that they understand that this is available so that we can uh, get a specimen. I promise you guys, this will make your life so much. I mean, does anybody have plenty of time to go around and solve tips and control problems? I mean, I know you. You probably, you just got all kinds of time in the world. It's like you're sitting around waiting for the phone to ring for somebody to come go, I'm uncomfortable, let me hop up, right? Anybody anybody here feeling overpaid and underworked? <laughs> <laughs> so this, again, I think it's sort of out there. So, uh, for you guys don't know me, I'm Eric Strump. I just want to thank Kevin and uh, Phil and the team from Belimo for coming in and doing this. Thank you guys for showing up. Uh, we appreciate the chance to work with you guys and do business with you. Uh, again, remember the energy valve, temperature control problems, variable frequency drives, control. But let's definitely let, let, let's get yeah. hooked up with you guys. The next step, and then I'll like I'll be quiet. Is okay. yes. I one question. Um, those previous buildings that you mentioned, like say the University of Miami and MIT, what was the average cost of installation per air handler in those? Buildings. Average cost of installation per air handle. That's a good question. Uh, well, the payback, the payback was, I mean, we might be able to figure this out. The payback was two and a half years and it saved $60,000 a year. I'm guessing the total building. 120 for the total building, right? Like that. For the whole might, building, might, yeah. Might, yeah, it might, might be. 11 air handlers. Yep. Is, is that how you guys get projects yeah. sold on the, on the uh, is there a typical threshold for you guys in terms of? Three and a half years or less. What is it? Three and a half years or less. Okay. So whoever come up with that theory, we definitely want to talk to money because that's. Want to get some information. Yeah. We were with the ATC contract. Oh, gee. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, like I said, Kevin's got the white papers that'll walk through all the MIT study. Yeah. Um, cool. We get you all the information you need. If there's a if there's a facility, uh, I'm in Atlanta all the time. Uh, you can contact me directly. You can contact Stacy. We'll come walk the building. We'll look at your air handlers, give you some ideas, whatever that, whatever that, uh, even if it's not an energy valve, any type of Belima product. We work closely with Stacy on that. Um, if you want to show this product at your building, whatever you need, we can, we can send you this. You can go to energyvalve.com and it'll, it's online there. Uh, but just contact me or Stacy anytime and we'll come out and take a look at your building, put together some estimates or the ROI calculator or whatever you need. Uh, that's what that's my job is to come out and help you uh, troubleshoot and find places that this might work so anytime